My name is Kevin, and I'm an atheist, by and large because of Epicurus, Nietzsche, and common sense. Last year, China quietly announced an order directing universities to root out foreigners suspected of converting students to Christianity. China has long been opposed to religion and specifically sees the encroachment of Christianity from the U.S. as an overseas hostile force. The 16-page document titled, Suggestions for Doing a Good Job of Resisting Foreign Use of Religion to Infiltrate Institutions of Higher Education and Preventing Campus Evangelism, has ruffled some Christian feathers. Chinese leaders see religion as a tool of the West to divide China. The document sets a clear path for the education of religion in its proper context for Chinese universities. It warns the reader that foreigners using academic research and charity work can be a pretext for the infiltration of religion. The document plainly says, you must not underestimate the current harm and the long-term effect of such phenomena, and you must take forceful measures. It also orders instructors who are proselytizing to be removed from their job, while foreign students who refuse to stop proselytizing should be expelled. The Chinese document enforces the idea put forth by the late Christopher Hitchens when he said that religion poisons everything. At this year's Christmas address, Pope Benedict once again indicated his desire to team up with other religions to oppose gay marriage. The 85-year-old pontiff proposed the idea that gay marriage was threatening the family to its foundation by changing its true structure. The Pope was profoundly moved as a result of an essay done by France's chief rabbi, Gillis Bernheim. Rabbi Bernheim concluded that plans to legalize gay marriage are done for the exclusive profit of a tiny minority. The rabbi concludes that the idea of gay marriage moves forward because of political correctness. The Pope also supports the rabbi's assertion that a child raised by a gay couple would be considered an object rather than an individual. Franco Gerlini is a leader of Italy's gay community who responded by calling the Pope's position great foolishness. Gerlini remarked that where gay marriage has been approved, there's been no consequence on heterosexual marriage. Six American states plus the District of Columbia have followed Spain and approved same-sex unions. France is currently drafting legislation to allow for gay marriage. Yet the Vatican, with its reputation for gay child sexual abuse fully intact, will continue the fight to deny gay rights for everyone else. German archaeologist Paul Yule has uncovered the remains of an ancient Christian empire in Yemen. Among the discoveries is a stone carving which has been named Crowned Man. The carving depicts the figure of a barefoot bearded man holding a bundle of twigs in his left hand and holding a staff with a crossbar in his right hand. Crowned Man is also wearing a chain of jewelry, which is consistent with crowns depicted by the Christian rulers of ancient Ethiopia. Hila has dated the find to around 580 AD. This is significant, as it indicates that Christianity was far more prevalent in the area than previously thought. According to Eula, the area was a peaceful, multicultural community. Then, beginning around the 5th century, tensions began to increase over religious beliefs. The Byzantine Empire, with its huge horde of weapons, began moving eastward along with Christian missionaries who brought the doctrine of the Holy Trinity with them. The confrontation between East and West increased over time, which forced the population to choose a side. In an effort to stop the advance of Christianity, some Arab kings initially converted to Judaism. Soon after, the entire ruling class followed suit as people began to adopt names like Yehuda and Yusuf. Other discoveries indicate that the tribe Muhammad belonged to, known as the Quraysh, occasionally fought for the Christians. The discoveries appear to confirm that Muhammad was born in a city that stood under Christian ideology. Other indications that this is true comes from the Arab historian Ezraki, who mentions a Christian cemetery in the oldest part of Mecca. While many things remain unclear, Yulis surmised that three Abrahamic religions of the world intersected at that time with deadly results. The birth of Islam occurred during this time of great hardship. Climate data from the time also suggest a severe drought devastated the fragile ecology of the highlands, which forced the inhabitants to abandon the great city of Jafar. 
As cattle died of thirst and crops began to fail, the area was threatened with disease and hunger. The once tranquil city became a war front over the clash of delusional belief. As the situation became increasingly worse, Muhammad was threatened by disease and hunger. His wet nurse indicated concern about the plague in Mecca when told to bring the boy to his native city. Eula's discoveries and conclusions indicate that the reach of Christianity spread over a very large area, having influence all the way to Mecca.